Did you have Valentine's Day when you were a little girl, Ma? Oh, sure. In fact, if you look at this morning's paper, there's a picture of a Valentine made in 1847, over a hundred years ago. I bet I know what it said. Westville's finest accounting firm is Ron Lycan's CPAs. That's right, David. Ron Lycan's CPAs are Central Ohio's finest accountants. From the heart of Westerville, Ron Lycan's CPAs presents the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. <laughs> Attention all husbands, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. A little Valentine's music, if you please, Professor. That's not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> now that's more like it. Valentine's Day. Ah, me. At the home of the Nelsons on West Main Street, they're already at work on Operation Valentine. At least David and Ricky are. Now what do I do, David? You do the same thing with a Valentine as you do with a letter. Put it in the envelope and seal it. it. It doesn't have any sticky stuff. Let me see it. Hmm. There isn't any there. I got cheated, huh? What do you expect for a five-cent valentine? You sure are a cheapskate. Five cents. For a valentine. Well, it's only for a girl. You'll think... <laughs> You'll think a lot more of girls when you're my age. I paid a dime for this one. That's a lot of money, <laughs> boy. When you pay that much for a card, you let the girl know you don't mind spending money on her. You don't, but I do. When are you gonna pay me back that dime? <laughs> shush, 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 okay? You'll get it, okay? Hey, Mom, where's that bottle of glue? Right there in the big desk. What do you want glue for? There's no sticky stuff on my envelope. Oh, are you sending a valentine too? Yeah, to Mary Lou Benson, <laughs> a girl. <laughs> I gathered as much. The Mary Lou gave it away. Would you like to read it? Sure. Let's see what it says. Ozzy, you shouldn't read his Valentine. Well, for goodness sakes, Harriet, I'm his father. Roses are red. I always like that one. Violets are blue. We have a bulldog that looks like you. <laughs> You're sending this, Ricky? Uh-huh. Well, that isn't very nice, Ricky. Comic Valentines are all right, but we have a bulldog that looks like you? That's not very nice for a little girl. Oh, Ricky doesn't know anything. Here, read my Valentine. It's a real nice one. I paid a dime for it. Hey, you keep out of this. <laughs> Here, let's see it, David. Oh, this is a pretty one. I talked to a dove, and here's what he thinks. In the chain of your love, I'm one of the links. That's very nice. It's kind of a disappointment at the end there. I think it's a lovely valentine. Oh, it's delightful. You keep quiet. <laughs> I talk to my brother, and here's what he thinks. His girl wears perfume, and boy, how she... Never mind. <laughs> That's a lovely card. Who is it for? Eleanor Smith. She's the prettiest girl in class. You like my Valentine, Pop? Yeah, I guess it's okay, David. Only thing is, there's nothing unusual about it. It's a beautiful Valentine, David. Ozzy, don't try and discourage him. I'm not trying to discourage him, Harriet. It's just that if he's going to impress the prettiest girl in his class, he's got to do something a little unusual. What would you suggest, Pop? Well, when I was your age, I used to get some red paper, tinfoil, glue and stuff, and I'd make my own valentine. The girls kind of like that unusual touch. Well, if I were a little girl, I'd be very happy with your valentine, David. Well, I'm just trying to help him along, Harriet. You know darned well out of all the valentines you got from different guys, mine are the only ones you have left. That's right, dear. So you saved them. The other ones lacked originality. 
You didn't want them anymore. That's why I burned them. <laughs> Hi, Oz. Oh, hello, Thorny. I hate to see him pet you, Oz, but I can't wait. Here's a valentine from me to you. Read it now so I can watch your face. Oh, Thorny, cut it out. Nah, read it. I paid a dime for it. <laughs> All right. You're a little bit of heaven. You're a little ray of sun. You're a darling boy, an angel. You're an awful lot of fun. You're all that's good and wonderful. You're a welcome sight to see. You're this and more to everyone. But you're just a bum to me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Oz. That one isn't yours. My mistake. That one's for my brother-in-law. <laughs> I've got a special one for you. I've got it here someplace. Oh, that's all right, Thorny. I'm probably better off with this one I just read. Yo, by the way, Oz, have you bought Harriet's present yet? Uh, no. Not yet. Why? Yeah, I wouldn't wait too long if I were you. I was just downtown at the candy store, and they were running pretty low on Valentine boxes. Is that what you've got all wrapped up there? Yep, and it's a beauty. See, isn't that pretty? Yeah, yeah, it's real nice. The only thing, though, well, frankly, Thorny, it isn't very unusual. I don't get you. Well, just look at it. It's very pretty, but it's a red, heart-shaped box with To My Valentine inscribed on it. Well, naturally, Oz, that's what it's for. Valentine's Day. Well, I may be wrong, but I think women like something a little more unusual than that. You think so? Well, what are you going to give Harriet? Well, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But I can promise you it won't be candy. It'll be something that shows a little more thought and imagination. Like what? Well, as I say, I'm not sure yet. In fact, I'm on my way down to the store now to pick something out. Yo, here's your Valentine Oz. I knew I had it here someplace. It's called To My Next Door Neighbor. I made it up myself. Good for you. May I read it? Oh, yeah, sure. Ahem. <clears throat> to My Next Door Neighbor. I like you, Next Door Neighbor. I do, I do, I do. Next door neighbor, I like you. I do, I do, it's true. I like you, next door neighbor. It's true, I do, I do. I do, it's true. It's true, I do. I do, I do like you. <laughs> Thank you, Thorny. It's very thoughtful. Well, I like you, Oz. I do, I do. It's true, I do. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Same to you, Thorny. May I help you, sir? Oh, yes, miss. I'm trying to find something for my wife for Valentine's Day. Do you have any ideas? I might. Do you know the sizes of some of the things she wears? Well, her feet are small. When she puts them up against my back at night, they're about my waist up to here. <laughs> Very cold. Her glove size, let's see. About medium-sized hands, I should say. Of course, she's wearing her nails a little shorter now. About medium size, I'd say. Her stocking size is about the same size as yours, I think. Medium height... I think that's a pretty good description of her. You get any ideas from that? Well, how about a box of candy? <laughs> no, I want to get her something unusual. Something she wouldn't expect on Valentine's Day. I see. Maybe our Mr. Bigelow can help you. Which one is he? That man over at the next counter. The very good-looking, distinguished man. Wearing the blue serge suit. Blue Surge. Oh, yes, I see him. Doesn't he have a wonderful face? So strong. Oh, look, he's smiling. <laughs> that little dimple always shows in his cheek when he smiles. 
Do you think he could help me? Oh, yes. He's such a kind and generous person. Oh, Mr. Bigelow. Yes? <laughs> could you help us, please? Just a moment. What can I do for you, Miss Dunlap? I thought you may be able to help this gentleman. I'm trying to find a gift for my wife. Something a little out of the ordinary. For your wife? Hmm, let me see. Well, that's a little difficult for me. I'm a bachelor myself. <laughs> you needn't be, Mr. Bigelow. Oh, Miss Dunlap, what woman would want a lonely old bachelor like me? I'd appreciate any suggestions. Well, as I told you, I'm just a bachelor. I live in a little apartment and cook my own meals. I don't have a wife to buy pretty things for. You could have. Just some sort of unusual gift. A Valentine's Day present. <laughs> I imagine you'll get quite a few Valentines, Miss Dunlap. I bet you'll get hundreds, Mr. Bigelow. Oh, you flatter me, Miss Dunlap. I won't get any Valentines. You'll get one. I'm the person who won't get any. Will I? I think you will. <laughs> I'll send each of you one if you'll just help me find something. <laughs> Mr. Bigelow, we've known each other for ten years. I think it's time we stopped being so formal. Why don't you call me Genevieve? It's my name, you know. Your name is Genevieve? My name is Randolph. <laughs> and my name is Ozzie Nelson, and I'm trying to find a present you for- You know, my mother's name was Genevieve. Do you think a compact would be nice? <laughs> oh, isn't that a shame? There's a loose button on your coat. I could sew it on for you. Oh, would you? It's not too much trouble. Oh, don't be silly. Shall we say tonight? About six o'clock? Wonderful. Do you like good music, Genevieve? I love good music. Do you like walking in the rain? There's nothing I like more than walking in the rain. Say, galoshes might be an unusual gift. <laughs> Do you like fried chicken? Oh, I love it. Do you like to sit in front of a fireplace? Oh, yes. Do you like to go for long bus rides? Oh, very much. Do you like jazz? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Do you like to walk? Oh, very much. Genevieve, there's something I've wanted to ask you for ten years. Randolph, your carnation, it's trembling. That's my, that's my heart. Would you have dinner with me tonight after you've sewn on my button? Oh, excuse me, Randolph. I think I'm going to cry. Cry, Genevieve. <laughs> I guess I'll be going. Would you please? You see, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and I want to get something unusual for a beautiful lady. <laughs> Where have you been, dear? Oh, just downtown. Oh, what were you doing? Talking to the back of a blue serge suit. <laughs> I saw a real life romance happen today, Harriet. Valentine's Day is certainly inspiring. Were you looking for something special? Something unusual, maybe? For Valentine's Day? Oh, perhaps I'm old fashioned, but to my way of thinking, Valentine's Day is the day for a simple romantic gift. Candy, or flowers, perhaps. You can't fool me. In the first place, I know how clever and original you are. And in the second place, Thorny told me. <laughs> Thorny? Oh, yes, I think I do recall kidding him a little. Oh, by the way, he bought Catherine a beautiful box of candy. I bet she'll be delighted with it. You know, they had some very unusual ones this year. Red boxes shaped like hearts. 
You're very unconvincing, dear. I don't know what you bought me, but I know it isn't candy. Golly, with all this build-up. Oh, it must be terrific. Oh, look at the time. I have some work I have. Harriet. Are you going to help me with the dishes? Oh, sure. I'll be glad to help you. What do you think I bought you for Valentine's Day? I can't imagine. Honest, it'll be a complete surprise. Just give a guess. Tell me what you think. Why, I couldn't begin to. Harriet, please. Guess what you think I bought you for Valentine's Day. And give me the size. <laughs> Everyone, our buddy Oz is having quite a time. But you know what? He's got a point there about wanting something original, something unusual. It does make a difference, all the difference in the world. And not just when it comes to Valentine's either. So when you're looking for that blend of personal service and expertise, Round Lake and CPAs are the accountants for you. They offer a wide range of services for business owners, executives, and independent professionals. Their rates are competitive, and they are very friendly. We're getting close to that dreaded tax time, so don't delay. Contact Ron Lycan CPAs today. Does anyone know of, a, of an unusual Valentine's Day gift? If you do, contact Ozzie Nelson right now because he's in a bad way. He's been trying desperately to find one for Harriet, but he's getting nowhere, fast. Yes, Ozzy's in trouble. In fact, I'll go further and I'll say he's in Dutch. Is that Ixtein you in Dutch? Ja, das Ixtein me in Dutch. Is that Ixtein for you? Ja, das Ixtein for me. You in Dutch? For me. Talk too much. So I see. Was it wise? Could be dandy. Something nice. Please not candy. Not okay? Not today. <laughs> And here's Ozzy as he slowly makes his way up Main, West Main Street. Yahoo, Mr. Nelson! Hello, Emmy Lou. Mr. Nelson, you sound so unhappy. Ah, uh, you didn't get a Valentine. No, it isn't that, Emmy. I've been trying to find an unusual present for Mrs. Nelson, and it just isn't easy. Why don't you got, get buy her a box of candy? You see, that's it. Everybody gets candy or flowers. I want to do something unusual and clever. You should know, Emmy Lou. What would a woman especially like for Valentine's Day? Gee, Mr. Nelson, I don't know. I know what my Aunt Margaret wants. She wants a husband. <laughs> well, Mrs. Nelson already has one of those. A rather ordinary one, I'm afraid. Besides, I can't give her me. Why can't you? What a wonderful gift. You're giving her yourself. You're giving her everlasting love and devotion. You're her Valentine. You, Huzzy Nelson. What a beautiful idea. <laughs> Emmy Lou. That, that wouldn't. Wouldn't what? What a sentiment. Offering your heart and your soul. So different and so unconventional. Not a box of candy and not a bouquet of flowers, but yourself. Sounds like I'm trying to save money, doesn't it? No. <laughs> it's beautiful and lovely. You really think so? Oh, yes. Yes, let's do it, Mr. Nelson. Give her yourself. You know, it's silly, but the more I think of it, the more I think it sounds like a good idea. In fact, any way out sounds like a good idea. I'll do it, Emmy Lou. My gift to Mrs. Nelson is on its way. Goodbye, Emmy. Are you going to walk? Yes, why? It wouldn't be any bother. I'd be glad to drop you in the mailbox. <laughs> I'm yours, Harriet. Take me. No, no. Darling, I've brought you a gift more precious than gold. I rush across the room and I take her in my arms and that you, Ozzy? Yes, dear. I've brought you a gift. Oh, Ozzy, you shouldn't have. No, no, no. I've brought you a gift. Where is it? I don't see anything. Is it in your pocket? 
I've brought you a gift more precious than gold. Oh, Ozzy, you shouldn't have spent so much money. I'm yours. Take me. I I've got you. Where's my gift? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're hiding it. Where is it? Under your coat? Partly. Partly? Yes, partly under my coat. Some of it's in my sleeve. Some of it's in my shoes. Oh, come on now. Stop teasing me. What is it? Harriet, it's... Oh, this should be a dead giveaway. Your present is now on the Davenport. Oh, for goodness sakes, don't sit on it. <laughs> come on now. Stop teasing me. What is it? It must be something wonderful. I'm beginning to think it's a little stupid. Come on, what is it? It's... It's what? It's... It's downtown. I better go get it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Harriet, it's Mother. Hello, Mother. Did you get any Valentines yet? Well, as a matter of fact, I did get one. It was a beautiful box of candy and a lovely card. It was signed from an anonymous admirer. Isn't that romantic? Oh, yes. Thank you, dear. It was so nice of you to send it. <laughs> well, I tried. Oh, I can't wait to see what Ozzy's getting me. Oh, whatever it is, he's sure been giving it a build-up. Well, if I know Ozzy, it'll be something clever. He always gives such novel, unconventional things. What are you going to give him? One of those hand-painted ties he likes so much. Oh, Harriet, not another one of those. No, Mother. This just has palm trees on it. I'm not telling... <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do, Harriet. But don't you think it would be better to give him something a little unusual? After all, he's getting something special for you. I suppose so. I'll admit, a necktie isn't very original. Maybe I'll think of something else. Well, you know the old saying, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Why don't you bake him an apple pie? You know how Ozzy likes apple pie. Oh, Mother, that's a wonderful idea. He likes them with a lot of cinnamon, piled high with apples, ooh, and a flaky crust, and then cream poured over it, and a slice of cheese. Harriet, dear, that pie sounds so good. Take a look out the window and see if I'm coming up the walk. <laughs> Ozzy, is that you? Yes, Harriet, it's me. What's in the package? Oh, I'll bet it's my present. Let me see. Harriet, wait, please. Before you get all excited, this is your Valentine's Day gift, but I'm afraid you're going to be terribly disappointed. Oh, Ozzy, you know better than that. No, I mean it. It's all my fault. Just goes to show you how a guy can outsmart himself. What do you mean? Valentine's Day comes once a year, so the average intelligent man buys his wife some candy in a pretty box shaped like a heart. Maybe he buys some lovely flowers. Not me. Oh, no. Something extraordinary. Oh, stop that nonsense. Whatever you bought me, I'll love it and you know it. Do you know there's not a single store left in town that has a Valentine candy box left? Well, that's all right, dear. Not only that... The flower shop is sold out of nearly everything. Well, anyway, I bought you these, and I hope you won't hate me. Ozzy, don't be ridiculous. <sighs> Ozzy, how wonderful! A bag of popcorn. <laughs> Ten cents. And a little bouquet of violets. Thirty-five cents. Forty-five cents altogether. What a beautiful thought, and I didn't even think you remembered. Well, I... remember what? Oh, stop making believe. After all these years, you still remembered about the popcorn and violets. Oh, yeah, sure. The popcorn and violets. In fact, I wasn't sure you'd remember. How could I forget? I even wrote it in my diary. 
our first date. Ozzy bought me violets and a bag of popcorn. I think I like him. Gee, and I never knew it. Hey, I smell apple pie. Harriet, you remembered. Remembered what? The apple pie. Don't you remember? What? Apple pie. Wasn't, wasn't there something about apple pie? I mean, I know we had some wonderful romantic memories connected with apple pie. Anyway, I know you made it for me. Gee, thanks. Well, thank you, dear. I hope it turned out well. Wait a minute. Now I remember. It was the same night as the violets and the popcorn. We stopped off at that little restaurant and bought a big apple pie. Apple pie? What a wonderful evening. Can you ever forget the moonlight on the lake? And I took you in my arms and I kissed you. You did? Sure. <laughs> sure, don't you remember? The canoe almost tipped over. Oh, ho, 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 marvelous. Oh. Harriet, you're not laughing. I have never been in a canoe in my life. <laughs> Hi, Pop. Oh, hello, David. How do you think Eleanor liked the valentine? I'm not sure, Pop. You don't think she liked the poem? I didn't send her the poem. I did like you said. You remember? You told me about those homemade valentines you used to make? Oh, yes. Didn't she like it? I don't think so. When she passed me in the hall today, she said, hmm, some valentine. <laughs> That's funny. Used to go big with all my girls. That is, when I was a girl. A boy, that is. <laughs> How did you make it? I did like you said. I got some tin foil, a little roll of red paper, a bottle of glue, and a couple of crayons. Are you sure she got it? Oh, I know she got it. I guess she just didn't know how to put it together. <laughs> Thank you for joining Ozzy, Harriet, the boys, Thorny, Evie Lou, Mom, that couple in the store, and that person with the weird Dutch thing going on as we presented Buying a Valentine. <laughs> Ozzy Buys a Valentine is an old time radio performance by the West Royal North High School Theater. Ozzy was played by Michael Hull, Addison Sajo was Harriet, Brian Tippa was David, and Owen LaFon was Ricky. The Lovebirds, Miss Dunlap, and Mr. Biglow were played by Maddie Niedercourt and Henry McCoy, respectively. That pesky neighbor Thorny was played by Parker Caney, Emmy Lou by Hannah Hoff, Mom by Theodore Garrett, and the Dutch guy was Noah Adams. Our music composers were Bennett Kieser, Jeffrey Siefker, and our musicians were Elena Fami, Bennett Kieser, and Rachel McFarland, Sydney Shaltons, and Emma Westlake. Foley's were performed by Bibby Elringer, Allie Heyman, Giovanna Mason, and Delaney Ryan. And this show was made possible by the incredible generosity of the McFarland family, whose support has allowed us to continue bringing the magic of theater to life. Thank you for believing in our passion and for being a part of our, theat of our theatrical family. We cannot express enough how much your support means to us. We would also like to thank April Shaw of State Farm Insurance, the Exercise Coach of Westerville, Blue Skies HD Video Productions, Site Insight Web Services, and the Washburn family on behalf of the Furniture Bank of Central Ohio for their continued support. Ozzy Buys at Valentine was directed by Mrs. Kim Mollahan and technical directing and recording by Mr. Sam Fami. Thank you for listening to our show. I'm your announcer, Audrey Oler, and until next time. Thank you.